Hi everyone, welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I am going to talk about how to install vCenter 8.0 on VMware ESXi 8.0. Okay, so before jump into the vCenter installation, let quickly understand what is importance of vCenter server. So as we are aware, ESXi means it's a hypervisor. We can run a hypervisor operating system on any of the hardware. So in this diagram, we have three HPA servers. We have run the three ESXi hosts, ESX1, 2, and 3. On top of the hypervisor, it allows you to create a multiple virtual machine. Virtual machine means it is a software generated machine, looks like a physical machine. And to manage all our ESXi host and virtual machine, for the management, we are using the tool called vCenter Server, in short form vCenter, and we can also call it as VCSA, vCenter Server Appliance. Okay, and before we plan to install the vCenter Server, we must have a idea on resource requirements. So resources required for different deployment sizes. We have a while deploying the vCenter server, there are a different sizes like tiny, small, medium, large until the X large. So normally tiny means it's a same like a T-shirt sizes. We have a CPU minimum CPU two. Suppose if you compare X large, the CPU count is increased to 24 and the tiny memory size minimum is 14 and X large is 58 and storage also increased and even the host minimum for tiny is 10 host management and virtual machines are up to 100 virtual machine when it comes to x large it's supported up to 2000 esxi host and it's supposed up to 35000 virtual machines okay now let's talk about vcenter server 8.0 pre-installation steps so before installing esxi host first to verify that our system meets the minimum software and hardware requirements for vcsa vcenter server appliance install okay so in our lab system we have a three years success host we are going to choose any one year success host to install the vcenter server and to validate the minimum hardware requirement let's log into our lab system and we can see system is connected to the let me connect to our lab system and let's log into our esxi host and verify the resources we have enough resources and this is ESXi host 8.0 version. And when you select the data store, we can see storage, we have a nimble data store. Nimble storage, we have the data store size is approximately 5 terabyte, 4.88 TB. And also the host CPU and memory, when you see from summary tab, we can see CPU and memory, enough CPU, enough memory and storage is available. So we are good to start with the installation. And once we switch over to the slide, if you see the another requirement is, so this portion is we validated just now. And download the vCenter server or VCSC installer ISO file from the VMware website. So in the interest of our time, I already downloaded the binary file and I copy to in our local system. Let's say in our C drive, I just copied VMware downloads. I make it as a VCSC 8.0, okay? And VCSC, uh, latest patch vcs 8.0 a was released on last week only so this validation also completed and another point is mount it to a network vm or physical server from which we want to perform the deployment let's say we are already using one windows jump host so in that windows jump host only we downloaded and we are going to use this system to mount the our vmware vcenter server appliance so right click and mount once we are mounted when you see here there is a cd is mounted okay so right click this file and open we can see all the vcsa installer files okay let's talk about another point so these three are okay and another one the machine which we deploy the appliance must run on your windows linux or mac os so in our lab scenario we are using windows okay 
and gather the target ESX host detail where the destination vision is to be deployed. So we already discussed we are planning to use ESX01 to install our vision to server. So this validation also completed. And another one verify that ESX host is not logged on our maintenance mode. So when you log into our lab host, when you see the our ESX host is not in the maintenance, it is in the normal connected state only. Okay, but clearly says it's not connected to any vCenter. Once we install vCenter, we can connect this host to our new vCenter. So this validation also completed. Another point, verify that NTP servers are running state. So we have one of the AD server is running. We can use AD server as our NTP server. Okay, AD is up and running. And another point is, get the ip settings from networking team or ip inventory list storage details from the storage team so we have the storage we already got an idea we have to use the storage is like a nimble storage and we need a one free ip address okay to configure the ip settings okay and next one is we have to create for ip address also let me log into our lab system and we have to choose one of the ip address let's say we already given 41 42 43 for our three years success host and our ad server also running with ip address Okay, let me check our AD system IP address. Okay, it's given as 44. If we plan for vCenter server also, let me check one of the free IP address. Okay, AD system is not in power on state. Let's power on. And 45 is free, 43 is okay. So for vCenter server, we can plan to use the IP address as 45 IP address. Okay. And let's go back to another point. So IP settings, we already found one free IP.45. And storage details, we plan to use nimble storage. And it says that create a host record and pointer record in DNS with fixed IP address and FQDN. So we'll create a record in our AD server. Okay, once the AD system is up, we can create. Let me open the console in new tab. Okay, once it is connected. Okay, let's log into the system. So we are going to create a DNS record for our vCenter server. So once we are logged in, let me open a DNS console. DNS MGMT dot MSC. So once we open the DNS, Let's create a DNS record. Let's say we have ESX 1, 41, 42, 43, AD server is 44. I'm choosing the subsequent IP 45, okay? So right click here, create new host record and vCenter name, let's say we can use this 
all lower case v center hyphen zero one. Okay, so the easy to understand v center hyphen zero one and IP address is same series one ninety two one sixty eight dot two four three dot forty five and create a associated pointer record and click on add host. So host record for vCenter was successfully created. Click on done. So you can see vCenter host record is created. Just refresh here. It's become the static and same way go to the reverse lookup zone and refresh here and you can see the host record is created or not. So pointer record also created. OK, so back to the slide. So this point also completed. And another one is get ready with the supported web browser Chrome, Firefox or Edge for vSphere client access. We are already using a Chrome browser. So all these pre-installation steps are completed. And the download also just for our easy understanding from the VMware website, uh, release date was the last week only. I downloaded this patch only. We sent us our 8.0 with the latest patch. Okay, and now, and during the application uh, appliance deployment, we have four options install, upgrade, migrate, and restore. But in our scenario, we are using the first option installing a new vCenter server. But the upgrade option, if you have any old version, uh, that old version, if you want to upgrade it to latest version, we can use upgrade option. And the migrate option is like if you have any Windows flavor vCenter, if you want to migrate to appliance vCenter, we can use migrate option. Suppose if your vCenter have any of the uh, corruption issues or any uh, un unexpected disconnection issues during that scenario you can use the latest backup to restore okay that is importance of vcenter 8.0 appliance deployment high level overview but we choose installation is the recommended step and the next point is vcenter server appliance normally it will install in a two stage process first one is deploy ovf like in deploying a new vcenter server is the stage one and in the stage two we are set up uh, setting up a vcenter server appliance so we'll start with the our lab system we'll start doing all these two stages stage one and stage two so once we connect to our vCenter server, uh, connect to our Windows Jump server, sorry, and we can launch our VCSA installer. We have a two options, VCSA CLI installer, VCSA UI installer, user interface installer. It is the graphical installation, so we can use this method. You, if you are using Linux OS, you can choose the first folder. For Mac OS, you can choose second one. For Windows, Windows 32. OK, within this Windows 32 folder, there is installer.exe. Just right click run as administrator or just double click. It will launch the VCSA installer. So as we've seen in our slide, we have four options. So the recommend option now is install. And we have two stage process. So we are going to start the stage one deploy vCenter option. So click on next and license agreement accept. So review the all the license information and accept. So click on next. And we sent a server deployment target on which ESXi host we plan to install that ESXi host or if you have any existing vCenter, you can choose that vCenter. But currently we have only ESXi host, enter that ESXi host host name or IP address. So our ESXi host IP address is 41, ends with dot 41. So let me copy the host IP address and enter here. OK, and the port is default port 443 and ESXi host login credentials. Default administrator is root and assign the password. So once the login credentials are entered, click on next. See certificate warning to accept and continue. Click yes. So it's validating the settings. Now it is asking for a setup vCenter VM. So we have to choose our vCenter server VM. Already we created a DNS record says vCenter-01. So we can use the same name vCenter-01. Okay. And password for the vCenter server WAMI page. So you can set the password. So now click on next. And the deployment size, just now we talk about in our slide, there are multiple sizes, but in our lab, we have only three ASX hosts at present. So I'm going with a 
tiny size. Suppose in your production environment, if you have more than 100 years success hose, you can choose medium. Even if you have between, your host count between 400 to 1000, you can go for a large size. OK, so now I'm going with a default tiny size now. So click on next and install an existing data store accessible. The current data store is it's automatically detected as a nimble data store. So you can select the nimble data store and enable the thin disk mode option. OK, because the second local data store, we do not have enough space. So I selected the nimble data store. OK, now click on next. And network default, I am choosing the VM network IP version 4 and IP assignment is static and we have to enter the FQDN name. Let's say FQDN name is vcenter-01. And our domain name is anpslab.com. Okay, even if you see in our AD system, you can see our domain name is anpslab.com. Okay, the same name I enter here. Now IP address, we are choosing the IP address is 45. So you can just enter the IP address as 45. And the subnet mask, actually subnet mask for this network. Uh, let me double check what is the subnet we are using. See subnet mask is just 255.255.0. So let me enter the same subnet mask. Zero and the gateway we are we can use the default gateway. So default gateway is ends with the 254. Okay. And the DNS server, our DNS server is AD server IP only. So AD system IP addresses we already saw here AD system IP address is 44. So that is only our DNS. So let's copy this IP and change the last digit. It's a 44. And the HTTP 80, HTTPS 443, and we have given all the settings. Click on Next. OK, and now ready to complete the all the steps. Click on Finish. So currently stage one deploy vCenter is in progress. Normally this installation may take a while. In the meantime, we'll talk about our slide. What is the steps we done until now? So if you see mount ISO on a system vCenter installation two stage process. OK, and the first step deploy vCenter. We already initiated this step and deploy OVA file as a vCenter server appliance. This is also one method. We just launched the setup.exe, okay? Any method is fine. And the first stage involves deploying a new vCenter server to the target ESX host. We choose the target ESX is our ESX 01. So this part also completed. And define vCenter server appliance name and root password. Yes, we already given vCenter server name as vCenter-01 and we assign the password and the set select a deployment size cpu memory and storage size we select in our lab system we selected as tiny size but in your production environment you can choose based on your esx host count okay and the next point select the data store location and choose it as thin disk we already selected the nimble data store and we selected as a thin disk this part also completed and the configure networking ip settings yes we already choose the subsequent ip so ip address also we selected configured and the stage two we haven't started yet okay so uh, let's go back to our lab system all these steps are completed and deployment is in progress so 30 percent So it may take a while to complete.
46 percent okay let's keep updating so in the meantime i will try to explain the remaining points in our slide and the stage two once the stage one is completed we can start with the setup of vcenter server and log into the vcenter server appliance management we have to log into the appliance management with the 5480 port in short form we call it as a vami page vami means vcenter appliance management interface okay once this part is completed finally we can configure and synchronize the ntp and also sso all this we can do that that's how the second stage completes the complete setup of vcenter server okay once it's uh, three steps i will show you once the stage one is completed okay so let's again back to vcenter so, okay 67 percent we can monitor the status at present Okay, 80%. It says waiting for RPM installation to start. This may take several minutes. Okay. So when you see the virtual machines, see already we sent a 01 VM is created. So vCenter is default connected to virtual machine network. When we select here, the communication established through management network. Okay, in the meantime, let me explain the remaining points. So once the stage two is completed, we have to perform the post installation steps. See within our stage two, it says vCenter server is successfully installed and additional step must be configured. That is called the second stage that is setup. Setup means configure a new vCenter server. And once that is completed, the post installation steps normally log into vSphere client use a vCenter server using vSphere client and we can start and create the organize our vCenter server inventory objects like data center creation and assign a vCenter server license enable VCSS shell and SSH but in our lab system we are going to use as a evolution license but in the production environment we may use for a official licenses okay let me quickly monitor the status. Okay, 91, it's almost going to finish.
97 percent ninety-nine okay now it's completed if you see the on-screen instructions it clearly says you have successfully deployed the vCenter server to proceed with the stage two of the deployment process vCenter server setup click continue okay if you exit you can Continue with the vCenter server setup at any time by logging the vCenter server management interface. This is the URL. Actually, HTTPS vCenter server IP address colon and port number 5480. So you can use this URL to access the WAMI page or just click on continue. It will redirect it to the stage two. See the stage one is showing as completed. Now we are doing a setup of vCenter server stage two. So click on next and time synchronization SSH, we can go with the default. Later also, we can enable these two options. So click on next and SSO configuration. Third option is SSO configuration. So here it's saying that single sign on domain name. So single sign on domain name, let's use a default name vSphere.local and uh, default administrator, administrator at the rate vSphere.local and assign the password. Now click on next. And this customer enhancement program, experience improvement program, if you want to choose, you can choose or else uncheck. And ready to complete. So all the summary of the network settings, vCenter server detail, SSO details, now click on finish. So stage two, you will not be able to pause or stop the install from the completing once it is started. So click OK to continue or cancel to stop the install. So we are OK to continue. So now the stage two is in progress. It will also take a while to complete. Okay, so if you back to our slide, this point only previously I mentioned. Okay, see stage two setup vCenter server, login to vCenter server appliance. So we use the same one and the configure appliance time synchronization vCenter single sign on and the second stage complete the setup of vCenter server. So all these steps are completed. And even in the second stage, we clicked on the setup only now. Once the stage two is completed, I will explain one by one the post installation steps. OK, so we'll monitor the stage two status. So we have to wait for a while to complete the stage two.
so 28 percent so some of the vcenter servers starting is in progress Now we center services are starting. At 34 percentage. Okay, all other vCenter services are starting now. Okay, 60 percentage now. Okay, now VMware vSAN Health Service starting is in progress. So 72%. Maybe it may take few more minutes to finish.
Now Tanji related services are starting. Workload control plane. Eighty-eight percent, almost finishing stage. Okay, ninety eight percent. Okay, it's completed. So, install stage to complete. It clearly says you have successfully set up this vCenter server. vCenter server setup has been complete successfully. Click on the link below to get started. So please close to exit and vCenter server getting started pages. This is the one. Okay. So now click on here and you can choose any of the browser. Let's say Google Chrome. It will launch the page. You can just refresh. If it is not open with the host name, you can try with the IP address. Okay. So HTTPS, our we given IP address is 45. So we can successfully launch the vCenter server and log launch vSphere client. Using vSphere client only, we can log in. Okay. Still, it is showing cannot be reached means because it's a newly set up. So Sometimes we may need to do one quick restart also and better we can connect to the WAMI page first. So WAMI page is 45 colon 5480. So login as root. And enter the login credentials. So within the WAMI page, you can see vCenter server overall health status good CPU memory. All the health status is good state. OK, let's back to our slide now. Post installation steps. See, log into vCenter using vSphere client. We can able to log in. And another one, start the create organization, our vCenter server inventory objects. So this one we can do only with the IP address. Let me use the 45 IP. If it is not loading means the only reason is we have to enter the local DNS record. So drivers go to the ETC host record. We have to update the local DNS record. Let's say here I'm going to update our DNS record. Let me copy the IP address. And we can enter our host name. Host name is vcenter hyphen zero one dot ANPS lab dot com. Okay. Now click on save. Once the local DNS record is updated, 
we can try to launch the page again. So refresh. Vami page is working normally. Only this page redirecting having issue. Still we are getting error means. Only thing is we have a AD server with the same network. We can try to launch from the AD server. OK, now minimum close the DNS console. And launch the any browser. Let's say we have browser here. Microsoft Edge. So open the browser and enter the login credentials. Maybe we just completed just now vCenter. We may give quick reboot. So even if you want to reboot vCenter server, we can reboot from here. Actions reboot. OK, so reboot may take a while. OK, we sent a reboot is in progress. So let me explain the other points in the meantime. So assign license, we are using a evaluation method and enable NTP and all I will show you. And create data center also I will show you and add ESX host I will show you and configure ESX next networking. OK, it's an optional step. OK, and in the production environment, we have to configure ESX host. Whatever the data stores we have in our environment, we have to configure all the necessary data stores. But in the lab, one data store is enough and create virtual machine. This is also optional step and create cluster, enable cluster features, optional steps and configure syslog server. If your organization have any syslog server, we have to configure and create test VM and test the virtual machine backup. This is also optional step and install the VMware enhanced authentication plugin optional step and another one validate the VCSC health status for all the resources via WAMI. This option we already tested overall health status is good and start managing vSphere environment and finally end the VCSC deployment. OK, so we completed all the steps. So let's quickly log into our lab system. See VCSC restart also completed. We'll try to access the jump host first. If the jump host not accessible, we'll try from a another system. Sorry, IP address copy paste is incorrect. Let me copy correctly. It's a 45. OK, still no healthy upstream means still the service are rebooting. And the ETC record will quickly verify whether we updated correctly or not. Host record open with notepad. vCenter ANPS lab.com and IP address. Sorry, there is a typo. It's a 192.168.243.45. And we should give one time space. And now click on save. So now click on here. See vSphere client service is stopped working. Maybe it's still taking time to restart all services.
So from AD server also it's able to launch. OK, still the service is stopped working. Maybe it may take a while to update. OK, so but the installation wise we, we know all the two steps and we completed all the process. OK, that's it. Thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view like, share and subscribe to the Grand Cloud Garage channel. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.